Well, good morning and welcome to Goodison Park. It's Everton versus Newcastle United on Everton Live. My name's Rich Wolfenden and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Halpin. How are you, Sarah? I'm very well. Very well, Rich. Uh, we've got a bit of blizzardous weather for us today, but uh, yeah, it feels like we're in Goodison Park all the time lately. I know. It's is great. this the third time in a week, is it? Something like that? I know. We're like kids at Christmas, aren't we? We're very, <laughs> very fortunate, uh, despite the cold weather, to be here and uh, very much looking forward to this one, hopefully back to winning ways. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, you know, after getting the draw against Leicester, we can get a three points, uh, pick up three points against Newcastle today. A uh, quick word on the, on the Leicester game. It was a, a tail of two halves, really, wasn't it? We were pretty decent in the first half, but then Leicester really came into it in the second, didn't they? Yeah, you know, they are just a fantastic side, aren't they? And I think we are going to be a little bit frustrated given the fact that we took the lead in the game with such an excellent goal, right-footed from James Rodriguez. And then you look at the chances late in the game as well for Richarlison, Gomez and, and Dom and you think you, we probably could have nicked it. But in the, the state of the season, you know, four points off Leicester who are right up there and on the top side, I think, you know, it's a good point. If we can follow that up with a win today, then it's been a very good week. Absolutely. Four points out of six from Leicester is a pretty decent return from a side who are also competing for those Champions League places. Uh, well, anyway, it's Newcastle today. They're struggling a little bit lower down in the table. Um, and as always, we've got an action-packed show for you on Everton Live. This is what we've got to come up. So uh, we will be celebrating uh, the 33rd birthday of Everton in the community that is this weekend. We'll also have the player arrivals for you as soon as the players make their way into the stadium. And of course, we'll have the team news from half past 11, one hour before kickoff. Our interview today is with the man who presumably will make his way back into the start in 11 today, Abdullahi Decore. Uh, we'll then have the latest in our Everton uh, fans section. This time we'll be hearing from the Chicago Evertonians. Uh, we'll have an interview with one of Everton's latest signings for the women's side Jill Scott and um, we'll have the highlights well not the highlights but some goals over past uh, meetings with Newcastle in the past uh, we'll also be hearing from Carlo Ancelotti and then from half past 12 the full live free commentary on EvertonFC.com and remember Sarah will be asking questions to our special guest Ian Snowden later on so if you've got any questions for Snods uh, make sure you get on Twitter and use the hashtag EvertonLive for any questions you have there now, like I said, this weekend celebrates 33 years of Everton and the community getting founded, and this is what we've done over that time. So Everton in the community, 33 years old this weekend. We'll have more on that later on on Everton Live. Uh, so, Sarah, just a, a quick word then. Newcastle at home today. Um, they beat us at their place last year. Um, surely we've got to get a revenge today. Oh, you, well, you would hope so, wouldn't you? I know, obviously, Newcastle are in a, in a very poor run of form, which can kind of make you nervous. As you can see, the conditions here, windy, cold. It's uh, But, yeah, you'd, you'd fancy Everton to get the win today. We've just got to make sure that, that we get the three points. Yeah, well, fingers crossed. Kick-off is, what, an hour and ten minutes away. Uh, so we will have, like I said, full commentary on EvertonFC.com. Now, a man who you've probably seen on EvertonFC.com quite a bit over the past few years is Ian Snowden, and he is our guest today. <laughs> And here's our guest now, Ian Snowden. Snods, how are you doing? I'm good. Cold. Yeah, it's on there, isn't it? But ready for this game. Good, good. Uh, so what are you expecting from Newcastle then? They're, like Sarah said, they've not been on a great run of form, have they? They're not, but there's no easy games, as they say, in the Premier League. Just look at uh, Burnley 
last week over over the road. Of course. Don't like to mention the names, but over <laughs> the road and uh, just look at Chef United at Old Trafford the other day. So uh, no easy games, but they're lacking in confidence, surely, mm. Newcastle. I would be uh, bitterly disappointed. I was up at uh, St James's Park for our uh, game up there. We didn't play well at all. Uh, and, and even then I looked at Newcastle's team and I thought, we've been beat by a, a poor side. So today I, I expect nothing but a victory. Mm. I think, um, as I said, Newcastle playing not with much confidence. Steve Bruce, who, who I get on great with, I think he's a tremendous fella. Um, very passionate about his football. Um, I hope him well after this game. But uh, yeah, I, I expect a victory today, nothing mm. else. So their side's probably not going to change as much as it. Uh, not, it's going to be pretty much the same side that played us at the back end of last year. We'll have a few players back who are missing from that game. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same side. Is it just a mentality thing today, do you think? Uh, I don't think it's a mentality. I, th I think we're... I think the squad, uh, as a group of players that they call them these days, I think we're, we're strong. I think we've got a fantastic manager uh, who knows how to win football games. Uh, and I think, I think, majority of the boys, I think everybody who plays for Everton at this present time are wanting the club to w uh, win, wanting the club to do well. And I think we've got a great atmosphere and a great bunch mm. of players in that dressing room. Yeah. Well, we were talking a little bit before we came on air about who we'd have in our starting lineup, mm. and we were discussing at left back. I was saying Luca Dean, you were saying Ben Godfrey. You well, know, there's, there's different positives for both players, isn't there? It is. Luca Dean's an exceptional player, but why, why leave Ben Godfrey out? I think he's been exceptional since he came. He's played centre back, right back, left back. Uh, he's got pace. But then again, you're right about Luca Dean. His supply into the box for Calvert Lewin is fantastic. So. I think it's great that we've got these riches. Mm. Uh, you're talking, who will play right back? Will it be Mason Holgate? Will it be Seamus Coleman? Who will play centre back? I, I think Michael Keane's a guarantee because I think he's been playing since since lockdown really started. Michael Keane's been exceptional. Mm. So I think it's a centre half plus Michael Keane, whether it's Mason, whether it's Yeri Mina, I just don't know. So I think Decora. The Corey will come back in. Mm. Uh, it gives us that energy, it gives us them legs in midfield, but. I'm not the manager, Carlo is, and it'll be interesting uh, when we get the team sheet, who he's actually going to play. Yeah, well, we'll get that team sheet in about seven minutes or so. Carlo's obviously got that headache, which Steve Bruce can only wish yeah. he'd have over, over team selection. Um, what can we? Who do we need to worry about from Newcastle today? Surely Callum Wilson's the main man for that. Yeah, he is. He is. He scores goals. He's quick. Uh, we, we will have to watch him. I like... Uh, Almiron as well. I think he, he's positive. He picks balls up, <laughs> runs at the art of the opposition defence. So I think he's an handful. Other than that, I think set players are. We, we've got to match. We've got to match Newcastle for set plays, corners, free kicks, etc. But other than that, I don't really see anybody worrying us. I'm more. I'm more worried how we start the game and how we we play the full ninety minutes. I don't worry about the opposition in 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 Newcastle I really don't if we start positive we start on the front foot I think we'll win this game is it about pace and momentum and just yeah. going at them as fast as we possibly can yeah I think it is I think from the first whistle we've got to play with the tempo we've not got to at times we, we're quite lethargic at the back and we just pass it around for the sake of passing I think if we can get it into midfield get Rodriguez on the ball as much as we possibly can I'm hoping he plays in a free role a, a role that he just roams around that if Newcastle find him hard to pick up uh, and we get the ball to him because on the ball there's no question about it he, he's the best passer of a ball at our club uh, probably world football his <laughs> left foot is fantastic yeah. I've only seen a left foot like that many many years ago here that was Kevin Sheedy right. but um, yeah so if we can get him in the vo involved in the ga game early doors then uh, I think that's going to be a big plus yeah, well, we saw his goal, didn't we, against Leicester? That was his weak foot, wasn't it? That right was his, foot. That was his right foot. Outside yeah. the penalty, a brilliant technique, brilliant skill. Um, let's just talk about the Leicester game for a minute. Mm. Um, the first half seemed pretty even. You know, we had chances, Leicester had chances, but then the second half, we just seemed to take our foot off the gas a little bit, didn't we? And that's ultimately I, what I led to Leicester. Think, I don't think it, it was a matter of taking his foot off the gas. I just thought that Leicester stepped it up. Mm. I think Leicester are a very, very useful side, even without Vardy. Um, they've got some exceptional players. Um, but you could see it coming and coming the second half yeah the first half I quite enjoyed the first half uh, second half I was kind of holding on and thinking it's coming this goal's mm. coming uh, unfortunately Jordan he knows 
Jordan knows. He don't need to be told. He should have saved it. But I still felt at the end we could have won it. Would it have been an injustice? I don't know. But I'd have taken it. I'd have taken a, a late goal and won two one. But uh, Leicester are a good side, and we took four points off them this season, which is which is quite good. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, just looking at the, the goalkeeper situation, obviously Pickford made that mistake. There was no getting away from it. Mm. Do you reckon Carlo Ancelotti, as he has done many times this season, will park him on the bench today and give Olsen a chance? Yeah, he might do. Sticks? Olsen's come in and he's done terrific. He's he's not really had a lot to do, but uh, the saves he's had to make and he, he's done well. He, he looks commanding in the air. So, uh, I, yeah, Jordan's. I, I love Jordan Pickford. I love him as a person. I think he's a great character to have about the place. He's a winner. Um, and he, he does. He, he's made a few mistakes, but Jordan, Jordan, be one of them. He, he'll bounce back. But I wouldn't be surprised today if, if Olsen's in goal. Yeah, we're just getting pictures of the players mm. arriving here. We just saw uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin a moment ago. You just mentioned it there. He had that chance right at the end of the Leicester game with the header that just just went wide. Um, he's having a little bit of a lull in the Premier League in terms of goals. Um, surely the way this Newcastle side set up, where they're going to be defensive, they're not going to look to. You know, play any kind of expansive football. This mm. is the type of game where Calvert-Lewin just has to stay in the right area, and eventually it'll well, come to him. That's what you want, Cal. You don't want Calvert-Lewin. Uh, he's got everything, Dominic, to be a, to be a good player. He's got athleticism. He's good in the air. He's quick. Uh, he's even good looking. The lad. <laughs> <It> really, <laughs> he's is. got it all. It's irritating, he has got it? it all. He has got it all. But what I want to see him do, I don't want to see him drop deep and pick, try and pick up balls on the halfway line or go wide and get involved getting in around that 18-yard area because I believe now we've got players of the quality at Ames, Richarlison, Luca Dean from wide positions, a Wobie's assisted a few times as well, to get the balls in the right area and if Dominic's there and he's on his toes, he will score goals and it showed mm. the other other day when he scored at the back, the other week at the back post. Um, so, yeah, I think Dominic's a 20-goal a, a man season playing in our team at the minute. Mm. Yeah, well, fingers crossed he breaks that duck today. Let's hope so. Um, so, behind him, let's talk about the midfield. Mm. Uh, Decore will presumably come back today. Um, yeah. But then I feel like every other, well, the other two midfield positions are kind of up for grabs. It could be Gomez, could be Sigurdsson, could be Davis. Who do you expect to, to fill those I midfield really, gaps? Re I don't know. I, I really don't. I've been thinking about it on the way. Sat there this morning, then driving in, and I'm thinking, I wonder what who he will play. Will Seamus come in at right back? Decore, for me, has definitely got to come in just mm. to give us that energy and that box-to-box uh, -box player I think he might play Gomez alongside him mm. um, and that's nothing against Tom or Gil it's a bit more creative yeah 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 and I and I and I think um, I think we'll have a lot of possession and I think we need creative players because Newcastle will drop deep uh, and try and make it hard for us to break them down so I think we've got to have creative players in there to hopefully get that pass beyond their back four or or just down the side for Calvert-Lewin so yeah, I think Gomez for me with the Cora. Yeah, that would be a bit of a shame not to see Tom Davis come yeah, out of yeah. the side. Because he's looked really good over the past few yeah, weeks. Yeah, he's done all right, Tom. He's uh, he, he works exceptionally hard. Uh, I'd just like to see him make longer passes now and again. But obviously that's the manager, mm. what he wants him to do. While Alan's out, he just wants him to sit there and uh, just keep the ball. Uh, and he, he, he does that pretty well. But I just think here at Goodison, against a a low in confidence team in Newcastle that don't really get that forward that quickly I think Andre Gomez is the right the right partner for uh, Decorah today yeah um, so we've been really prolific on, on set pieces this season you know Yerry Mina Michael Keane popping up with goals here there and everywhere um, do you reckon Carlo will be thinking uh, when he's choosing his centre back pair and that which one is more of a goal threat maybe because you know Holgate doesn't necessarily score as many goals as Michael Keane does mm. or Yerry Mina do you reckon that's coming into his play? Well I, I thought that I, as again I'm, I'm sat thinking will he play Mo Mason Holgate alongside Michael Keane I think Michael Keane's the number one centre back for us I, I think he's been outstanding mm. for many many months so I think it's A another with Michael Keane uh, now Yerry Mina has done nothing wrong and he gives you that goal threat and defending corners he's got that height to defend corners as well he's probably better in the air than Mason Holgate in both penalty boxes mm. but then we'll have, a, we'll have a lot of play where Mason can come out with the ball yeah. if he plays him at centre back so yeah. interesting well we'll see right now Snods because we've got the team news in for Everton versus Newcastle kick off half past 12 here at Goodison Park Jordan Pickford retains his space in between the sticks Michael Keane in at the back as you said best choice to play that position this season, Rashalison continues up front. Be interesting to see whether he's on the right or the left today. 
Calvert-Lewin leading the line once more in the Premier League for Everton. Gilfie Sigurdsson is in that midfield role back into the starting eleven. Luca Dean gets into the starting eleven as well. And then Yeri Mina presumably will be playing alongside Michael Keane. Abdoulaye Decore in midfield back from suspension back in the side. Alex Awobi starts today. As does James Rodriguez turn into quite an interesting formation. This from Carlo Ancelotti, Seamus Coleman in there as well. So I'm going to have a lot of questions for you in a minute starting <laughs> to what this formation is. So uh, Alex Awobi, James Rodriguez and Seamus Coleman. In my head, all of those will be playing down the right-hand side. But usually you only play two players down the right-hand side, don't you? So who do you reckon? Yeah, well, obviously the back four is Michael Keane, Yerimina, Seamus Coleman, Luca Dean. Uh, Surprised him, him leaving Ben Godfrey out. I think he's uh, he'll be unlucky. But when you've got an abundance of talent that we have, and as I say, I think Luca Dean, since his arrival at Everton, he's been outstanding. Mm. So then Alex Awobi is going to be right hand side. It's going to be Sigurdsson and Decore. I would think the centre two. Yeah, I think so. Richarlison, I probably I would play him. See, he might play the two up the front in Richarlison and Calvert Lewin. Maybe. But then I would like to see Hammers Rodriguez giving a free role. Mm. So I'd play Richarlison out wide and I'd play Hammers Rodriguez behind Calvert Lewin and let him let him do a Gilfie Sigurdsson role. Let him mm. Peter Beersley used to do it magnificently in that number ten role. I would like to see him dictate play, keep giving him the ball and let him dictate play. So I, I expect Rodriguez to just play in behind Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, and uh, out on the right then, it's probably going to be Iwobi. I think he got the assist yeah. for Calvert-Lewin, didn't he, back at St James's yeah. Park? Is that what he's thinking, that Iwobi's directness could probably I, I would him? think so. I think I think Alex Iwobi the last couple of months done really well. Um, I think he's been positive. He, he's got balls into the box. And, uh, yeah, I, I, the jury was out when we when we paid a lot of money for Alex Iwobi. Everybody went, why have we paid this much? And... And his performances, it's hard when you come to a new club. There's no question about that. Uh, and his performances weren't great. A lot, of, a lot of supporters were thinking he's not really for us. But I've got to admit, the last couple of months, his performances have been very, very good. I'm sure he knows that, the manager knows that, and he's got an important role to play for us. Yeah, and obviously there's a, there's a plethora of wide options at Everton as well, isn't there? I mean, Gordon and Bernard. We'll get the, the full um, substitutes bench as well very mm. shortly. Um, but Richarlison seems to be the first name in terms of a wide player on the team sheet, doesn't he? Um, Richarlison's one of, one of them, Richard. I wouldn't like to play against him uh, as, a, as a full-back because... Um, all right, you'd try kicking him now and again, so he goes down, he goes down far too he easy like for, going down, for he? my liking. <laughs> but what he does, he he works exceptionally hard as a wide player. He tracks back, he makes it uncomfortable for the defender, he'll put his elbow across and he, he'll try and make a tackle. So he's annoying as a, as a, as a fullback, from a fullback's uh, point of view, he is annoying and he, and he works hard. So Richarlison's a must for me. Yeah, so Pickford is back in goal today. Yeah. Um, is that Ancelotti just confirming that He's definitely by yeah, far and away his first choice. I think Carlo said it on many occasions that Jordan Pickford is his number one. Uh, no, it doesn't really matter what we think, what the fans think, it's what, it's what the manager thinks. And if he sees Jordan Pickford is number one, if he's picking his side to beat Newcastle today and he wants his, or what he thinks his best keeper, he's playing Jordan Pickford and, and fair enough. And yeah. that must be great for Jordan's confidence as well. Uh, because after the mistake against Leicester, it's in the back of his mind, obviously, and he, he wouldn't have liked to have missed this game because a lot of people have said, oh, he's been dropped, he's been left out. Mm. Not that he's rested or anything, but he's got faith in him, the manager, and he's he's left him in. Yeah, brilliant. Well, good news, John Pickford. Cheers, Nods. Uh, we'll kick off his just under an hour away now. Remember, get onto Twitter, use the hashtag EvertonLive to get your questions to Snods later on in the show. Uh, now, here on Wednesday, we were held to a one-all draw with Leicester City, and this is the best of the evening's game. Well, two teams in fine form meeting at Goodison Park this evening. For Farner, and here's Madison now as Leicester keep the ball moving. Harvey Barnes, Justin goes ahead of him. Barnes for Madison, Madison goes for goal onto the roof of Jordan Pickford's nets. There's the switch for Luca Dean, there's the touch for James Rodriguez. Can he find Calvert-Lewin? No. Back with Rodriguez, though. He gets a shot away brilliantly, and Everton are in front. It's the first shot on target in the game, and Everton lead. 
James Rodriguez with his right boot. His fourth goal in the Everton jersey. Everton lead against Leicester. Here's Yuri Tillemans into the penalty area. It goes and good defending again. Combination of Keane and Mina and Godfrey as well. They were all in there. And here comes the corner. It's another touch onto Johnny Evans. It goes. Now Barnes. Yuri Tillemans. He got the shot away and Pickford couldn't keep it out. It has snuck in inside the post. We've got Luca Dean here in support. He can cross. He does. Calvert Lewin. Oh, that was the moment, wasn't it? You thought there when it was arriving at Calvert Lewin's head that he might just find the corner of the net. Not quite. Not quite for Everton. A point apiece for Everton and Leicester. Final score, Everton 1, Leicester 1. Arsenal watching that back. I think Tom Davis's face said it all there. He we did. were doing the same watching it again, weren't we? He did. Calvert Lewin's uh, reaction and Tom's in, in in behind him as well. Because the the big mates, the pair of them, uh, they get on great on and off the field. And uh, I think Tom had have said you should have scored there, Dom. But it, it was a great idea. Just just unlucky. He just went wide of the post. But would we have deserved to win? Would have took it. Would have yeah. took the three points. Nobody. I, I've been involved in games, Everton have been involved in games where they've dominated games and come away with nothing. So I just felt Leicester, second half, we're on top, uh, territorial, and possession-wide, they had loads of possession. We just couldn't, at times, couldn't get out of our own half. But then, as you say, we could have won the game. Well, that's the thing that makes it a little bit frustrated. As you rightly said, you know, I think on the basis of the game and the chances that Leicester created and the possession, and they were very, very good, particularly in that second half. But yeah, those chances at the end, Dom, Richarlison, Gomez. I know. You know, but Hammers, you know, on, on the man who scored himself, what a goal that was. And with his, his, you know, least preferred foot, his right foot, he's unbelievable, isn't he? Have world-class play, players got a weak foot? <laughs> well, I, don't think, very... I don't think Messi has, I don't think Ronaldo has, and he's world-class. Yeah. Uh, he has been all his all his career, so I don't think he's got a weak foot. Well, you can see that. It's not a weak right, foot, that is it? With his right foot finish. He, his left foot is like a, a little wand. It's brilliant. He he can pick people out. He switches play with his left foot. His vision's tremendous. But what a right foot finish that was. He just moved it onto his right foot and went afraid and killed it. Did Smeichel absolutely no chance whatsoever. Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? And I think when we when we take the lead and the way that the lads have been defending recently has been so good as well. So it was frustrating to concede, but on the on the game itself, I think a draw probably fair. And as I said earlier to Rich, you know, four points off Leicester in the season. They're a top side who are going to be competing for the top four and arguably the title. So it's not a bad return, is it? No, they are going to be competing as well because the, you can see that the likes of Leicester giving Man City, Liverpool, Man United games and, and I, I wouldn't be convinced out of them three teams when they play Leicester who would, would, who would win to be yeah. quite honest because that's how much I think of Leicester at the minute I think uh, defensively they're very good and attacking wise they're, they're, they're exceptional on the counter attack so uh, to take four points and I thought we thoroughly deserved the victory at Leicester Definitely. at the King Power we played ever so well down there so uh, yeah take four points is, is good news Definitely. Only one goal conceded as well against the top side, which is great. But somebody who will be returning to the side who we were missing through suspension against Leicester is Abdoulaye Decoré. And here's what he had to say ahead of the game. Since I'm very little, I was in love with football, so. Of course, I'm very happy to be to be in the Premier League right now. It was it was my dream when I, I started to play football to play in the in the best league in the world. So I'm here at the moment in, in the in the in the big club, you know, in the great club. So I'm very happy, and I want to to even more have more success uh, in this league. Yeah, he's a great manager. You know, I always dream to to play the under. With such a great manager like Carlo Ancelotti, he was he's uh, one of the nicest guy in 
in, 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 the, in the world of football. He gave me a lot of confidence, a lot of advice, so very happy to, to play under him. What a wonderful move there from Everton. And Abdoulaye Decore provides the finishing touch. Yeah, of course, I think he's one of the best time I had to be an Everton player. I think a lot of players dream to be in that team and uh, I'm very happy to be in that team. They are, you are a very good player, great signing, good atmosphere, good, um, you know, the, the mood is very good in around the club and uh, of course at the moment it's nice. Of course, we want to be successful this year. This is uh, the, the main target because uh, without that you can say uh, we can say the thing is well, and uh, of course, you want to achieve good things at uh, the end of the season. It's one of my targets uh, during my football career. I want to play in the Champions League soon. And uh, the, the best the best way is to, to qualify, to try to help to qualify Everton in the Champions League. So, of course, uh, it's going to be huge for me to, to play in the Champions League with uh, that Everton shot. We still have a uh, you have two competitions, you have the Premier League and the, the FA Cup, so you have uh, two trophies. So it's going to be, of course, very hard, but uh, I think this year you have a great team. We show you can um, you can do great things, so of course this year you can win one trophy. Yeah? Brilliant stuff there from Decore, and what a start to his Everton career he's having. We missed him, didn't we, last week? And he'll be a, a welcome return today. Yeah, without a doubt, he's. Uh, I admired him at Watford uh, when we played against him. He got energy, uh, made it difficult for our midfield players to pick him up, and his work rate is tremendous. And I think since he's came, come to Everton, I think uh, you can see when we celebrate goals, all the lads like him. He likes the lad. There's. What the Sarah, in, in our in, in our dressing room, we've got no big time Charlies, and we've not we've not had that for since I arrived at the club. Uh, and Seamus Coleman won't allow that in a dressing room. Phil yeah. Jagiel can never allowed that in a dressing room. So I don't think we have any big time Charlie. I think we're all a close knit little family at Everton. We are uh, in everything that we do in the community to out there on the pitch. And that's why we are, we are a fantastic club. So uh, I think him coming to Everton, I think he's realised we're a massive club, and wow, what a good club we are! And I think he's excelling in in his uh, in his role at Everton Football Club. He is, and some important goals as well. Of course, you know, scoring the goal against Rotherham, what was a really tough game. He scored the winner there, and he's come up with some really important last-ditch tackles and and goals at the other end as well. Um, but somebody else who we're looking forward to returning to the side probably next month now is Alan, the Brazilian. How fantastic has he been? We've just been talking about him there. We said he's like a Brazilian Peter Reid, the way he, he tucks his shirt yeah. into his shorts, he wears the black boots. We love all that, don't we, Snods? Yeah, I think he'd have, I think he'd have fitted in quite well into the 80s team, to be Definitely. quite honest. Alan, he just goes about his job. And do you know what I like about him? Even after the first week or two of him arriving at the club, he was pointing the finger at one or two players and saying, come on, let's get it done. And for somebody that's been here, only two or three weeks to, to be doing that, to take that responsibility to order players around. I think that's great. So he, he has been missed. Uh, there's, you do miss players like that. But I, I just think he's, as a sitting old in midfield player, you don't get many better than him. You don't. We're very, very lucky to have him at Everton and we look forward to seeing him back in that Royal Blue jersey soon. But for now, let's throw it back to when we won in December of 2019 in Carlo's first away game at St James's Park. And they're on the offensive early on here. And a chance maybe for Almiron. Swings it deep. It's a good ball for Moyes Keane. Richarlison. Still a chance here. And Holgate's effort is superbly saved by Dubravka. Up steps Zigurdsson. The wall does its job. And the subsequent effort falls to Calvert Lewin, who's on hand to steer it home. The match winner against Burnley, Dominic Calvert-Lewin for Everton. Andy Carroll with the flick on, Joe Linton with the effort on goal, and Pickford forced into the save. Almiron going past Zigurdsson, that's a good ball in as well. Breaks for Hayden, and that's over the crossbar. A chance here for a strike at goal, and Pickford with the excellent save. 
still Tom Davis. He's wriggled away from two. Here's Moyes Keane. Still Moyes Keane. Great save to Bravka to deny Moyes Keane. It's the Dutch defender who's going to take this free kick. Floated in towards Carroll, and there it is wrapped home by Fabian Scher. He came close in the first half, and he scores in the second. And Newcastle have it again in a dangerous position. There's the drilled effort from Carroll. They've got men coming forward in numbers. Richarlison. Richarlison's cut back and put home by Calvert Lewin again. Oh, he is the Johnny on the spot for Everton. It has finished at St James's Park. Newcastle 1, Everton 2. Well, Carlo Ancelotti's first away game for Everton there in the Premier League. 2 1 winners against Newcastle United. You'd like to see more of that again, wouldn't I'll you? I'll settle for that today. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll settle for that today. Three points. Um, so, how, how well, I mean, he's done brilliantly well, but how impressed have you been by what Carlo Ancelotti has brought to this club? Just to have Carlo Ancelotti at Everton Football Club, I, I, I keep reiterating what a big club we are. Now we've got a big manager as well, and uh, I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic for the fans that they can look at somebody on the sideline and think, wow, he's done it all in football and he's manager of our football club. Uh, I think it's great for the board, board of directors to look at him and they've brought him to our football club as well. So, mm. uh, And I think he enjoys it. I think he, I think he loves being the manager of Everton Football Club. That's the, that's the main thing. And I think one thing he's instilled in the players is a winning mentality mm. and a desire to win football games. And now we're battling, whereas in some seasons... I've looked at our team and thought, have we had the stomach for some of these games? Have we? We've given in sometimes. With this team, I think we go right to the end. Even if, if we don't play well, I think the one thing that we do, that the players do give is is 100%. Everyone, they all mm. want to win. They all want to. They all want to play, and they all want to uh, battle for the shirt. And that's how it should be at a football club. And I think that comes from the manager and yeah. his coaching staff: the will to want to win and the will to want to play football. Yeah, well, hopefully that will to win is obvious today against Newcastle. Uh, remember, get your questions into Snods, hashtag Everton Live, over on Twitter, and Sarah will ask him some questions very, very shortly. Now, it's time for our later segment in our fan bases from around the world, and today we are across the Atlantic to Chicago. <laughs> My name is Mike Trakin, and on behalf of the Chicago Evertonians, I would like to wish everyone a very happy and healthy New Year. The story goes that our group was founded in early 2001 as the first U.S. national official Everton Supporters Club um, in North America. We were founded in 2001, it's 2021, this means this is our anniversary year so 20 years keeping the year open and you know keep your eyes on us the pandemic's complicated things but we're hoping to do a special thing or two in march to celebrate our 20th birthday we have over 650 members from all over the world at this point um it's cool being in chicago people pass through all the time um our, our, our regulars include everyone from expat scousers and others from the UK and Ireland to Americans like me who were born here and had our calling from Chicago um, and of course this year the Hamas effect has uh, introduced us to many local new Colombian friends who joined the group and are now part of our awesome blue family every week we meet at AJ Hudson's on the north side here in Chicago um, which is managed by a lifelong blue Jamie Hale um, Jamie and his head Barman Julio and the rest of the awesome staff really look at us every week, uh, even for those early 6 a.m. local time kickoffs. Uh, they get out of bed, they open up the doors, so thanks guys. Um, under normal circumstances, we've had you know anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 show up. We have our corner with our dedicated Everton wall full of all of, uh, the old Everton memorabilia that people have brought to the club throughout the years. Uh, it's in the, the main room, every Everton goal we scored, you know, Julio and the staff rings a bell. So uh, the, the pub itself, you know, it's painted blue. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise if you meet them. AJ Hudson's is a toffee bar. Myself, personally, I almost made it for the first time just this past March. In fact, I was on an airplane when everything got shut down um, by our president on March 11th. So 
you know, it's been a long year for all of us to say I'm looking forward to getting over there. First chance I get is a serious understatement at this point. Back in April, when my flight was canceled, I was caught completely surprised by a phone call a couple weeks later from Michael Keane, who had heard that our trip was derailed, and you know, just called to check in to see how things were going. And we had a down-to-earth conversation about pandemic life in Chicago and in Liverpool. Uh, he, he discussed a little bit, you know, about his home training regimen. It was really cool stuff. It meant a lot. Uh, it just really a, a, another example of how the Everton family has made us here in Chicago, you know, feel welcome and extended an arm, you know, to. I hear from other fans around the, the United States too about how the club is just great at reaching out. So it's been it's been cool. But short answer, yes, my favorite player, number five. Keep up the great work, Mr. Keen. The Facebook group could be found at Chicago Evertonians. We also have a Twitter account, which is Everton Chicago. And we have an Instagram account at Chicago Everton. We probably need to work at making those all kind of the same. But So yes, please get in touch. Stay safe out there. I hope to see you all real soon in Chicago. Uh, we're all very proud of the Toffees from Chicago. See you soon. Cheers. Our fan base in Chicago, there, there is Evertonians all over the world, isn't there? You must have people coming up to you, you know, when you're lying on the beach and that sort of thing beside the pool, <laughs> saying, are you I've, Ian Snowden? I, I've changed since my days. I had long hair and a tash, and <laughs> now I'm grey hair, a little bit weighty. So, <laughs> But, yeah, you still do, funny enough, you still do get recognised, but it's uh, it's more when you when you go away with Everton on tours and we do, we do the commentaries of, uh, when we go on uh, international uh, fronts with Everton. Uh, people still know who you are uh, <laughs> still thank me for signing for Everton over Liverpool which is a which is probably my biggest my biggest thing that uh, fans adore me for yeah. for, uh, for turning that lot down to join Everton so but uh, yeah when me and Darren do commentaries on the game as well we obviously Twitter feed during commentary we just get fans from everywhere all over the world tweeting in and it's and it's brilliant to know how many Evertonians around the world they, there is yeah, it's brilliant to see. And uh, we just saw, you know, a few clips there of a few Zoom calls, which tends to be the norm nowadays. You've been doing a few of those for everything in the community, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, I think me, me, Graham Stewart and Graham Sharp, three ambassadors, are making calls, video messages uh, to people, birthday calls. Uh, and then we've done a couple of a Zoom one. I did one uh, against Leicester. And, and I think Graham Stewart's doing one today uh, oh. to uh, American supporters. I don't know which which group of American supporters it is, but he's doing one half an hour before the game today. So uh, yeah, we're, we're we're well in touch with our supporters all around the world. Yeah, real well. Those videos and those sort of things you can find more about that at EvertonFC.com and of course on Everton's uh, social media channels as well. Now you may have seen uh, last week or the start of the week just gone uh, that Everton signed well resigned. A legend of the women's game, Jill Scott, re-signed for the club. It's turned out to be pretty special for me. It was exactly 15 years ago that I signed for this club. I think I was here about seven years and then I've done another seven years at, at City and then coming back here. But I think as soon as I heard that Everton were interested, I don't think there was really a decision for me. I think the team's been performing really well. I've always heard good things about the women's team in terms of the off-the-pitch stuff and then to see how well they're doing in the league as well. Uh, I just thought it was the decision was kind of made. I didn't really think about it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it was a, a massive conversation because I, th I think you just know that he wants to progress the team. I know obviously a top four, breaking into that top four is, is definitely a name. The team reaching an FA Cup final, I think you can see the ambition of the club. Sometimes you have clubs that want to talk about it a lot, but you don't see many actions put into place. So I know that this team, as I said before, they have um, good team spirit and everything, but then you can see the, the will to win as well. And I think that's why I wanted to come here, because I think if you can combine them two things, then it's a recipe for success. Yeah, I think that was a, the big thing for me. I think I could have probably stayed in my, my comfort zone, but I still feel like I've got a lot to give 
Um, I sometimes think you get, you get told about your age a lot as you as you get older. But for me, I want to judge myself on performances and on fitness. And whenever we do fitness tests and stuff like that, I'm I'm still up there with the with the top group. So I think as long as I can keep myself going, I still feel like I can improve as well. Which I think people will probably be thinking, God, she's 20, uh, 24. I wish I was twenty four, thirty four next week. <laughs> Um, but I still feel like I can improve. There's things I want to add to my game and sometimes being around different coaches and different coaching staff, I think that's something that Ever Everton can help me with as well. Well, it's nice to see Jill Scott back in Everton gear. Before we talk about Everton's women's side, just tell us about the scarf you got there, Sarah. Yes, the scarf. So our supporters club of the match is the Chicago Evertonians. So I've got my Chicago Evertonian scarf that I'm wearing proudly for Dave, who we haven't seen this season. He usually comes over from Chicago. He's, part, he's a member of the Chicago Evertonians. He comes over every season. I haven't seen him, obviously, for a while. So, yeah, hope you're enjoying watching back home, mate, and hopefully you get the three points for you to enjoy as well. And I know someone who'll want to sleep on your couch one day if Everton ever go to Chicago. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so let's talk about Everton's women's side. Um, they didn't get to play in the week because the game's called off because of the terrible weather, but tomorrow it's Manchester United at home, isn't it? It is Manchester United at home, so an absolutely massive game for the girls in this season. Really, really tasty one. There's a nice rivalry between those two, a nice tasty rivalry, so it should be great. Jill Scott, of course, uh, ex-Manchester City, so it'd be interesting to see if she gets to make her debut against them, or a second debut, I should say. Um, and the game is live on BT Sport as well, 2.30pm kickoff. so make sure that you're watching and cheering the girls on. But yeah, it should be a really, really tasty game. Now is, is the rivalry as, as hot and spicy as you know the men's game? Like when Man United come here um, and the, are re the, the stadium's full, is it like that for the women's game? Is it just as bitey, just as snappy? Well, I tell you what, like the women's game, it, it's getting more like that. The rivalries are getting more intense as it's getting more competitive. And I, and I love to see that. And Manchester United have got a passionate fan base, we'll say that. So obviously they'll be missing from the stadium. But yeah, um, it's, it's a nice little rivalry and it makes that game that bit more interesting as well. As, aside from the fact they're top of the table, you know, and and we could do a game and some points on them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that one. So when was the kick-off of that again? What time? 2.30pm tomorrow, BT Sport. OK, make sure you watch that. Anyway, focusing back on the game here, about half an hour until kick-off between Everton and Newcastle, and there's been a few tasty meetings between these two sides in the past.
I've got to say that Leighton Baines free kick against Newcastle is one of my favourite. You never ever. get you never get tired of watching Leighton Baines oh, goals, do you? You just don't. And I don't seen him play. I don't think he scored ever a tap in or anything, did he? They were all they were all worldies. Absolutely, and you know what what a player he was. So delighted that we've still got him at the club. But yeah, that goal always seems to come up whenever we play them, and I think oh, what a left foot. I know we've got hammers now, but Bainesy, what a yeah, player! Great signing, great signing for the club. Uh, loved Everton Football Club, still does. Yeah. Uh, and it, as you say, Terry, it's great to see him still here at the club, still working with the younger players as well, with David Unsworth. And uh, yeah, he's been, he's been a great servant and always will be. Yeah, he's fantastic. We absolutely love him hearing some belter goals there from our times away at Newcastle. What an away day that is as well, Snods. I know you're up in the gods, but I sit top balcony, so it doesn't phase me. I've seen some some decent performances there. Do you know Good what? Memories I, I, at Newcastle. I, 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 I've spoke to a lot of our supporters and, and they say it's the least they enjoy <laughs> away game. That they, 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 they're so high up. You're about a mile. I, I think know, it's a they, mile from the corner really, flag to... But they certainly, I, I've been there and I've certainly heard some noise from the Evertonians on many occasions up at St James's. So it's a great stadium, but uh, yeah, I'd like our sports to be a little bit nearer the pitch <laughs> yeah. than up there in the gods. <laughs> it's a bit different than Goodison Park, isn't it? Where we're, <laughs> but I think that's the thing when you're in a ways at St. George, uh, St. George's, St. James's, you, your voice, you're giving it loads to make sure that the players can hear you down at the bottom. And uh, I think the last time I was there was uh, Wayne Rooney 1 0. Uh, a few years ago now that so yeah would take would you take a one nil today i would take a one nil i'd take three points more yeah. than anything uh i'll be disappointed if if we don't take three points but if it has to be one nil it has to be one nil i don't really care as long as we get the points but i think there's more in it than a one nil for us i i think if we if we do play with a good tempo from the kick off I think this Newcastle team are here to be beaten and hopefully beaten comfortably as well I hope you're right Snods we could really do with an absolute thumping of a team we love that um, but somebody who's got a really special occasion today is Gilfie Sigurdsson who starts and makes his 100th appearance for the Toffees Gilfie your 300th Premier League appearance and a landmark as well of course is it as exciting a season as you've ever had uh, I think so, yeah, at the moment. Uh, it's going well. Uh, obviously, we want to continue that today with another, another three points at home. But um, you get these moments through, throughout every season where things are going your way, and hopefully, um, we can continue what we've been doing the last couple of months and, and really push on up. And we've seen the impact of Carlo Ancelotti because Everton won twice as many games in the Premier League compared to this time last season. So, what's he like behind the scenes in terms of detail or inspiration? How does he work? Very calm. He's very good. Obviously, very experienced. Um, he's uh, managed a lot of the top teams, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, the information he gives us is very good, very simple. Uh, and I think all of the players both really enjoy working with him and, and know what he wants from everyone. And we can see his, his aim is clearly to get back into Europe. He says he's missing the Champions League. That's a big hint. Yeah, I mean, he's been a success in probably every club he's been at. Um, and he wants to achieve things. Uh, it's no different now. He wants to take this club to the next level and, and um, win things and, and get the club in, back into Europe. Newcastle struggling, of course. You've got to take advantage of that today, haven't you? Yeah, but uh, as you know, in the, prim in the Premier League, there's, uh, there's no easy easy games. Um, you'd probably expect United to be Sheffield United at home and then you can say Liverpool against Burnley, but uh, that's just the way the Premier League is. Um, Plays and every team is now very good and, and every game is a tough one so we're going to have to play our best game today if we want to get something out of it. Yeah, so a massive occasion for Gilfie there and, you know, one that he'll be looking forward to. He'll definitely want to seal this with a win, won't he? Yeah, very much so. And I, I hope he rewards us and himself with a goal as well. That'd be nice. Uh, nice free kick, probably, well, Will he take it? Now we've got Rodriguez, we've got Luca Dean playing today. We've got abundance of <laughs> free kick takers. Uh, but Do you think he'd put his, his foot down on this and say, no, it's my 100th appearance, I want this one? I think they'd all look to the bench and see who... Uh, see what Carlo says. See, see what Carlo <laughs> says, yeah. But um, no, Gilfie. Gilfie came at a difficult time for us and the, the transfer fee that we had to pay were perhaps a little bit higher than we, than we wanted to, but that's no fault of Gilfie Sigurdsson. And he didn't really get a, a pre-season at, uh, 
at his previous club before he came to us, and, and he found it difficult. So a lot of fans have, have thought about Gil Sigerson. Was he worth? No. No, I don't think nobody's worth £50 million in, in, in football. Uh, but that's the money you have to pay these days. So, uh, But one thing Gilfie Sigurdsson does give you, his work rate is fantastic. He, he doesn't stop running uh, running around the pitch. All right, he, he'll be the first to admit if he doesn't think he's played well, he'll hold his hands up and say, I weren't involved as much as I should have been. I, I didn't play as well as I should have done. But one thing he'll, he'll give you is, is the energy to run around and, and close players down. And that's one thing you cannot fill. Uh, fault Gilfie on is his work rate. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, in terms of improved players, I think it's safe to say we have seen a, a massive improvement in, in Gilfie Sigurdsson this past season. And Carlo's showed a lot of faith in him and it's it's been rewarded, hasn't it, as well? Some important goals from him as well. Yeah, and, and he's made him, he's made him skipper on several occasions as well. So that, that tells you what Carlo Ancelotti thinks as Gilfie as a person, as a man, uh, that he's, he's rewarding with the armband. We've had several captains through, since Carlo came, Mason Allgate's captained us as well, Seamus, Luca Dean as well, so uh, yeah, and it just shows Tom. that he, th he thinks that, yeah, he, he thinks that uh, Gilfie's captain material at times. Yeah, it's brilliant to see that, and you know, looking at the team that we've got today, is there anybody else, Nods, that, that you're looking at that could potentially be match winner, make the difference for us today? Alex Awobi, of course, has been absolutely superb, hasn't he, over the last month or two? Yeah, I think, I think we've the beauty of it now we've got goals from different areas we've got Rodriguez we've got Richarlison we've got we're a threat from corners from, from corner kicks with Michael Keane and Yerry Mina now so I just think for the last few years we hadn't had that threat when we've had when we've had corner kicks we've been really we've had corner kicks and we're thinking are we tight at the back yeah don't give anything away because usually the corners have not been great have we scored more corners than for, we've scored? I think more, we have. Yeah, than, yeah I than think we have. I, I know in commentary, me and Daz have said, oh, we're a waste of time having corners because we don't really score <laughs> from them. But now you've got that threat. You've got Calvert-Lewin. You've got Yerry Meany. You've got Michael Keane. And all, all of a sudden, they're attacking the ball and we, and we look as though we're going to score from corner kicks. Yeah, and that is something, as you said, we've been lacking for a while. And now every time we get a corner, you think, ER, someone's going someone's gonna to head this home, which is which is what you want, obviously. Now, Snods, we have got some questions for you, um, as ever, from the fans watching at home. David Kearns wants to know, who does Snods think should... Uh, oh, no, we've already had that one. Oh, no, no. no. Sorry, I, I've, I've, I've checked that too quick. Who does Snods think should take the free kicks today? P.S., when is he growing the mullet back? So no, we've spoken about the, the free kick thing, but when when tell him the mullet, the mullet is never coming back. Obviously, <laughs> the grey the grey hairs here, the muzzy is never coming back. Oh. Even even for Movember as well, I'm reluctant to even grow the muzzy we're, back we're then as well. We're going to try you but, again, uh, Snods. I'm telling you, for, for Movember now, it's not just the the moustache. We my want... kids are watching this back home in Doncaster, and they they will say, do not grow that muzzy well, back. Well, now then. you know that you. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Ian, because I know your kids are going to be getting on you now to grow the grow. <laughs> so thanks for that, David. We got uh, Snods with the mullet back. Uh, Louise Piper wants to know who had the best style at Everton in your day. The best style. Yeah. Adrian Heath were very stylish. Graham yeah. Sharp used to think he was stylish. <laughs> uh, certainly not Neil Pointon. Uh, <laughs> the lads used to hammer me for my dress sense and style. But let me tell you, I was head and shoulders above Neil Pointon. <laughs> he was the worst. I can tell you the worst. Reedy used to be flamboyant. He, he still thinks he is. Reedy still <laughs> thinks he's 19. He can now, get away with whatever he wants. He, he wears his he? hats and his uh, flared trousers. <laughs> and he's, but he still thinks he's 19, Reedy. But uh, yeah, Neil Pointon's the worst. We had a few good dresses and a, and a few good stylish uh, in that dressing room. I love that. I absolutely love that, Reedy. <laughs> Reedy and flares, that's all I can think of now, I'll be honest with you. Um, Park and Toffee wants to know, when you went from midfield to defence, mm. was, e was that as easy as you made it look? Is it important for players nowadays to be able to play in more than one position? I weren't happy, I've got to admit. I, st <laughs> I still felt as though I'd, I'd, I could do justice in, in midfield. But I knew I had to go and do a job at right back because Neil McDonald came from Newcastle and he didn't didn't oh. set it alight really. When he first arrived, he found it difficult. So Colin Harvey just said, have I ever played right back? And I think I was comfortable on the ball. I had decent pace. All that's gone now. So <laughs> I, I, you you look don't at me, put yourself You look down at me there. now, I ain't got pace now. But <laughs> I'd have I, you on there now, eh? I, I had very... I, I, I was quite 
quick. Uh, so I used to get forward from the full-back position and I felt comfortable on the ball. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy playing full-back. I got my England call-up. Unfortunately, I got injured and, and never fulfilled that. But uh, I've got to admit, I, did, um, I didn't care where I played for this football club. Whether it was midfield, whether it was centre back, I played centre back as a sweeper a few times, played right back. Being at this club when Z Cars plays down that tunnel, you don't want to play for any football club in the world, and Everton Football Club, believe me. I absolutely love that snod. You're quite right. When you hear that drum roll into Z Cars and mm. you've got that royal blue jersey on, you play no better, anywhere the no skipper, better feeling. where the gaffer asks you to, wouldn't you? Exactly. Absolutely. That's it. Well, we are going to say goodbye to you in just a moment, Snods. Uh, been an absolutely excellent guest as ever. But I just want to get a quick score prediction from you today. I'm not giving Newcastle a goal. I'm love going to be that. selfish. Love uh, that. I think we're going to be defensively very sound. And I've also think uh, we've got goal scorers on the pitch today from different areas. So minimum two. I'm yep. going f two or three nil. Two so. or three nil. Yes, we'll have some of that. Let's well, re let's be able to relax the last 15 minutes and think we've got three points in the bag. We've won a game, and let's look to another game. But this it's going to be difficult. But let's get an early goal. Yes. Let's get an early goal and let's take the game to Newcastle and let's have a comfortable win for once. Definitely. And somebody else who will be hoping for a comfortable win today will be the manager, Carlo Ancelotti. And here's what he had to say ahead of kickoff. Carlo, we've seen some surprise results this season, so it's important not to slip up today if you want to stay in that fight for European places. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is an important game for this reason. Uh, I think we didn't have a lot of time to recover and this is what... The reason because I changed uh, some players to put fresh legs uh, on the pitch and and try to, to, to play with intensity this game with a good attitude. I think that the, um, the key point is this, the attitude, because uh, I, I, I think that Newcastle comes with a strong attitude, with a strong motivation. Now, because it's a quick turnaround, four changes. Decore comes back from suspension. Gilfie Sigurdsson's in. Coleman and Iwobi. So you've got the authentic, the sort of traditional, familiar fullbacks now as, as a threat today. Dean and yeah, Coleman. The different characteristic of the player. And see, it's all, uh, of course, we have uh, two fullbacks that can push. We can use uh, both of them. I think it's important for the game to have balance. They are going to play in counter attack. They have, they have players uh, fast and so. It's true that we want to win, to attack, but it's also true that we need to have balance in the game. Because we saw Newcastle improve in the second half against Leeds, so you want to get on top of them early, take the initiative away? Yeah, but every game is unpredictable. You don't know what happened in the game. Uh, uh, and so we have a lot of respect from Newcastle. They played really well, second half against, uh, against uh, Leeds. They have a good team, they have a good manager, so... Be focused there, pay attention, and three points. Nice to hear from Carlo Ancelotti there. I bumped into him in the park end before. He was just down there below us. Yeah, There was no coffees or pies available, though, so I think he was a bit a bit angry about that. But anyway, moving Always on. Always a he's pleasure got, to see him, though, isn't it? He's got a football match to look forward to, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that football match kicks off in 16 minutes, to be exact. Uh, what are you anticipating today from Newcastle? Well, I think the thing is with Steve Bruce, we know that he can play quite defensively at times, and that's what I, I don't want to see happen too much today. I think though, when you've got players like James Rodriguez, Luca Dean, mm. you know, Calvert Lewin, Richarlison, you've got players of such quality, Alex Awobi as well. Hopefully, we'll have enough uh, to break them down and, and get, as you know, Snod said before, get an early goal and then. Hopefully that'll set the marker then. And it's just got to be a win, hasn't it? I'll take yeah. a win in any form, but it would be delightful to get a, a nice two or three nil, as Snod said. Absolutely. So, yeah, full commentary, if you want to hear it, is, for, is available for free on the website, evertonfc.com. Uh, and that's about it, really. Uh, for today, I'm trying to think when's our next game. Is it a cup match? Well, it, I think it might be Spurs at home, but there's been that many recently, Rich, <laughs> to be honest. I, you know, yeah. my head's gone a bit, but I think Spurs, Spurs at home in the cup, is that our next game? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I'll have to correct you on that. Or we'll, we'll come back to you anyway. We'll see you soon is what I'm basically <laughs> trying to say. Um, Sarah, thanks for your help. Thanks Pleasure. a lot to Ian Snowden as well. We'll be back again for the next home game, whenever that may be. <laughs> um, and kickoff is just around the corner. Again, EvertonFC.com for that coverage. Uh, but to see us out today is the best of Everton in the community over the last 33 years. We'll see you soon.